Welcome back everyone, it's Matsmus, and I really appreciate you stopping by today, so thank you in advance. Guys, if you do wish to support my channel, I would really appreciate it if you could go check out my Patreon page. As usual, YouTube is kind of destroying military-related YouTube channels for support, so any support that you provided uh, to me in the future would be really appreciated, and uh, thanks in advance. So today we are talking about main battle tanks. It's been a little while since we've talked about them, uh, I've been doing some other things in the background in terms of gaming and other military equipment and such and just having some fun on YouTube. So I thought I'd get back to a bit of the core of my channel and talking about main battle tanks and the review of this rather impressive main battle tank from India. This is the Arjun main battle tank. It is quite an impressive little beast, uh, although depicted here uh, really with most of its ancillaries and modern day equipment on, there are multiple different sort of variants of this tank that uh, I guess have been concurrently upgraded from the past. But as always guys, I will talk about this tank as an overview and its history and specifications, and then touch a little bit on my own personal opinion on this main battle tank at the end. So let's talk about this behemoth first as an overview. So the Arjun main battle tank was named after the warrior prince Arjuna. It was developed by the Defense Research and Development Organization or DRDO for the Indian Army. It has been developed under a multi-collaboration program of the DRDO mainly at the Combat Vehicles Research and Development Establishment Laboratory in India. The Indian Army placed initial orders of 124 tanks in March 2000. The first batch of 5 tanks was delivered in August 2004 and a total of 45 have been delivered up until May 2009. The army has now received all of its 124 tanks. In March and April 2010, comparative trials on maneuverability of the Arjun MBT and the Russian T-90 tank in the desert resulted in a better performance, particularly from the Arjun main battle tank. The Indian army subsequently ordered another 124 of these tanks in May 2010, this time the Mark II. The Arjun Mark II variant is a lot more lightweight and a bit more futuristic in terms of some of its electrical, optical technology and sensors and high-powered lasers that potentially are going to protect it from anti-tank guided weapon systems, which I am personally a little skeptical about. It will be developed again by the DRDO with a total of 93 upgrades and concurrently is still being upgraded as we speak. This is as per the requirements of the Indian Army. The Mark II is pretty much already in service and was set about 2013 to 2014 to be ready for service. They are fully expected to be potentially contended and to be replaced by the aging army's T-72 fleet for about 2,400 tanks. So I guess in the future they're going to potentially make even more of these things. It's going to be rather interesting if they try and replace 2,400 T-72s with these beasts. Guys, I'm not sure if you're aware, but the Indian military is freaking huge. I am not kidding. Do your research. It is massive. A fleet of 2,400 tanks is incredible to me, and I think a lot of people under underestimate India's firepower when it comes to armored warfare anyway. We know the T-72 is an aging fleet, which clearly India has addressed, but uh, that's a lot of tanks to try and replace. In 2009, the Colombian army actually expressed its interest into buying these tanks to fulfill its immediate requirement of 10 tanks and further requirement of 100 tanks over 5 years when they ordered them. The development of the Arjun main battle tank began in March 1974. The tank heavily depends on foreign technology and equipment. This is a big contributing factor as to why I'm a little skeptical of this tank. Now obviously this tank looks a lot like the German Leopard 2 tank and surprisingly that's because Krauss Maffei who actually developed that tank did a massive amount of design assistance and hence the Arjun pretty much resembles the Leopard 2A4. I mean that big chunky flat face turret is very similar to the Leopard 2A4 us. And to me, honestly, in a personal opinion, I love the look of that turret. It just looks very intimidating. And I know a tank is there to engage and kill targets, but at the end of the day, it is a little bit of a psychological factor too. And I definitely like that front face facing sort of abrupt look to it. Up to 25% to 30% of the tank components, including the engine, transmission, gun barrel tracks, and fire control systems are all imported. 
The Argent MBT is equipped with an indigenously developed 120mm main rifle gun with fin stabilised armour piercing discarding sabre rounds and high explosive squad head ammunition. Guys, they've gone for rifled, which is rather interesting considering that, you know, most nowadays tanks are actually focusing on the smooth war options because of the limited capabilities of ammunition. An anti-personnel 7.62mm machine gun is fitted alongside the main gun and a 12.7mm machine gun is fitted at the top of the turret to aim at aircraft and ground targets. There is also an anti-helicopter round that is being developed to combat air to threat for the armour. The tank has special containers to carry 39 projectiles of 120mm ammunition. These containers keep the ammunition away from the crew, providing an additional level of survivability. The rear side faces of the turret are fitted with 12 smoke grenade launchers. The weapon systems could obviously be easily operated to create a definite smoke screen with 12 of them, and there is also a silent watch mode to allow for the auxiliary power unit to continue powering the vehicle if needed be to prevent any heat signature or loud noises exposing the tank and its position. Again, just like the Challenger 2 and most other main battle tanks nowadays, an APU is integral to the tank. Just like any tank, most armour packages are quite classified, however the Arjun self-protection is still, from what we can tell, quite impressive. The newly developed Kashan modular composite armour gives all-round protection to the tank from anti-tank ammunition. Kachan has been manufactured by the Defence Metallurgical Research Laboratory or DMRL in India and the armour is made of composite panels sandwiched between rolled homogenous armour or RHA which can defeat against most armoured piercing fin discarding sabre or heat rounds. The turret houses a lightweight compact Kachan armour package. An option is also available to add explosive reactive armour to the side and front of the vehicle. There is also potentially the ability to put mobile camouflage systems on there, including the rather impressive Barracuda Camouflage Protection System, which is basically a screening that is placed all over the tank with kind of a scrim netting look that you'll see on some of the Challenger 2s even when they get upgraded, get that package placed on them. Uh, very, very impressive technology to try and shield the tank, protect the tank from any kind of uh, you know, technology that can actually find it, heat signatures and such. The fire control and observation system is also rather impressive on this tank. The Arjun is equipped with a computer controlled integrated fire control system with laser rangefinder. However, it has been noted this technology is nowhere near the capabilities of modern day Abrams, Challenger 2, Leopard 2 or Macarva. The system is jointly developed by BEL and RIDE. The day and night stabilised sighting system is also incorporated into the system which is pretty again standard for most main battle tanks nowadays. The targets are hit with a first round hit probability and reduced reaction time due to its hunter capability mode which again all main battle tanks should in today's climate have. This means that the commander and the gunner can independently search for targets and engage targets at the same time. This is integral to keeping the tank safe, alive and able to actually engage targets. The system is also very capable of acquiring targets under all weather conditions and the stabilisation system allows for the main armament to accurately fire at targets on the move. With that gigantic 120mm gun, you better bet your ass it can do that. The gunner's main sight includes a day sight thermal sight and a laser rangefinder with the stabilised head on the barrel. The night vision facility is provided by the thermal imager, although we have been told by some of the research that I've done that the imager is really not that of high quality. The gun and commander can locate target in total darkness and in the presence of smoke, fog, snow, haze and dust. The Arjun also has a rather impressive battlefield management system which again is quite standard to most tanks nowadays. It has been developed by the DRDO and EBIT Israel. The systems connect the tanks to the other fighting units in the battlefield and it's also equipped with GPS based navigation systems to pinpoint exactly where it is in the battle. Upgrades to the tank under development include a laser warning control system and a tank urban surviving kit, similar to the TUS program for the Abrams. There's also going to be an aerosol smoke grenade system to increase its capability of screening itself and an IR jammer with laser warning. This is also very integral to some of the tank simulators that they're producing so that they can actually practice using these new modern day systems because at the end of the day guys you can't really practice using those systems without having some sort of simulation exercise to do so. The Arjun is powered by a single MTU 83A KA 501 10-cylinder diesel engine rated at 1400 horsepower. Pretty impressive tank engine to be honest there guys and coming from a mechanical background that's more than enough power that's needed for a vehicle of this size. The engine can provide a maximum speed of up to 70 km an hour and a cross-country speed of 40 km an hour. 
a new 1500 horsepower engine is under development to replace the existing engine. Now sadly this is where things start to take a turn for worst. Sadly the Indian Army is actually looking at major structural and design changes on this homegrown main battle tank. The state defence owned research development organisation say the changes could take up to 7 years causing a huge induction schedule of the Arjun Mark II. The service wants to redesign the hull, the turret structures and use newer material to reduce the tank's weight. The Arjun Mark II currently weighs at 68.6 tonnes compared to the 62 tonnes of the Arjun Mark I currently in operation. The Mark II's version weight makes it inappropriate for operations in the semi-developed sector of the Western Front bordering Pakistan where tank battles would evidently take place according to an Indian Army official. According to defence analysts, the Army has lost interest in the Arjun Mark II after it came disillusioned with the earlier version of the Mark I. The problem is that the basic structure and profile of the tank being heavy is really just not acceptable for the Army. The Indian Army has inducted around 124 of the Arjun Mark I's and as mentioned before because most of the components come from other countries, most of the supplies for these tanks have actually dried up. Recent figures from Indian officials have stated that 80% of the 124 strong Arjun Mark I tank force is actually grounded or I guess out of service due to more than 90 technical issues that they're having to work around in terms of design. This is a huge blunder guys. The Mark I clearly has not been a successful tank and it's quite upsetting to see that. It looked like it could be quite promising and I'm sure there's just been a miscommunication of design for this tank for its operational environment. That for me in my personal opinion really does bring this tank into a very low tier uh, and not doing so great it needs to be able to fix the key role of what the army needs it for and sadly it just doesn't do that uh, so a little bit of a letdown really and you know honestly i'm a little surprised with that 120 millimeter gun being rifled but i mean the charger 2 has it so it can't be that bad so that's it for today guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate if you could leave me a comment, let me know what you think about this tank and the video itself. Um, leave me a like and if you wish to support my channel once again, go check out my Patreon, I would really appreciate it. Thanks again for joining me today guys and stay tuned for more armored fighting vehicles in the future. All the best, bye bye.